So basically, um, I just want to quickly give you guys a, a, a rough, quick introduction into facial modeling. And I'm using this on a personal project because obviously I can't share um, content from work. That's all a non-confidential uh, confidential agreements. And um, so despite the belief of most people, oh yeah, facial modeling happening all in ZBrush and like all sculpt emotion, like expression sculpting ZBrush, no, that is not the case. We built all expressions and all blend chip mostly and solely in Maya. Some artists like to hop into um, Mudbox for it. Um, but this is for the fact that facial modeling is not just modeling an expression. So first of all, our department takes care usually of the head builds. So we built the head from the scan if, if there. In my case, when I worked on the Martin Luther King project, I was blessed with not having a scan. That is always fun. It was a likeness sculpt out of like um, a sphere in ZBrush. And that's of course where ZBrush is powerful, right? If you do a sculpt, if you build something from scratch, if you just do like an expressional sculpt, perfectly fine as well. Um, if it's your final pose. But as soon as it comes to animation and like facial expression or like blend shape work, which is what I've been showcasing here, where we basically break down, like just to give you guys here a quick heads up, this is like for those of you who know the office, um, I'm doing prison mic here because I just love this expression. And so I started with a neutral self, right? neutral head all sculpted out in zbrush i then eventually start um cleaning the sculpt in maya and what i mean with cleaning is you just go into into the inside of a head and have clean eyeball like eye backs wraparounds very clean eyelids um you have very clean lip lines so there is not like any kind of weird sharp line happening in here so we look at stuff like this a nice lip roll around and these are like the basics of facial modeling when you start in building heads. Additionally, the, the mesh or the edge flow like needs to follow like nasolabial fold, clear lip lines. It needs to have enough support around the eyes. It needs to support certain fold structures in, in your mesh. And that's what you can see here, right? Like I have enough topology to support forehead wrinkles. I have enough topology to support um, closing eyelids and detail on eyelids. And I can actually sculpt in details here as well for like worried looks or like um, um, brow lowers and things like that. And this mesh is not even high. Uh, Digital domain, we have a base mesh, mesh, mesh which is over 100,000 polys or like around 95,000 polys. And the reason why we keep them so high is because we need to be able to sculpt on them in Maya. And uh, the times are a little bit gone of like low res base, base meshes for faces, but you still have to kind of like find the balance between it, right? You can't just up -res the mesh to insanity and then it, it's more than you actually need. It's this fine balance and that is for hard surface modeling as well. Hard surface modeling is always finding the balance between too much resolution or not enough resolution, especially for like a little bit more, um, intricate objects where you have round surfaces with sharp cutouts. Um, anyhow, so basically what I started after building the neutral, we go then in and at work, we have scan data for this. So we have usually face like expression scans where we scan the actors in high resolution scanners to gather their expressions. In my case here, I had to build them from scratch. Um, bear with me, likeness, expression sculpting especially for single shapes because this is called fax shapes this is so so-called facial action coding system that breaks each facial expression down into multiple shapes so here as example what we're seeing is we're seeing these five different shapes so we have something called a, no a nose wrinkler which kind of gives us this this wrinkle like do you have my paint tool somewhere here 